at a really vital time, we are lucky enough to have leaders like our next speaker. David Rettel has been of our, one of our nation's foremost spectrum thinkers for years, and he has transitioned from the Hill to leading my old home in TIA. David is the president's principal advisor on telecom issues and has already acted to help unlock mid-band spectrum. He is a proud CTIA alumni, and I'm very happy to welcome him back. So please join me in giving him a warm welcome. David Rettel. Thanks for the, the warm introduction, Meredith, and uh, it's good to be here uh, with, with so many people who care so much about the U.S. winning the race to 5G. As, as you've no doubt heard today from everyone who's come before me, 5G and the technologies it will enable promise transformative change that will improve healthcare, advance manufacturing, and benefit public safety. And I'd like to commend CTIA for its Global Race to 5G report issued earlier this week, which featured studies by Recon and Analytics and Analysis Mason. Collectively, they provide significant data points on why 5G is so important to all of us, as well as recommendations on what needs to be done to ensure American leadership in this space. One of the most powerful illustrations from that report is the contrast between the benefits we've seen as a country from our leadership in 4G with the effects that losing wireless leadership had on Europe and Japan. Our leadership in 4G helped create hundreds of thousands of US jobs and a booming market for American hardware and software. In countries that fell behind, the negative effects were dramatic. The report quoted an EU official who said that the bloc lost nearly its entire market share for mobile phones. The report also makes a strong case that the government needs to take action to help our country win the race to 5G. Specifically, it calls on the government to find more spectrum for commercial services, and to modernize infrastructure rules. During my time at NTIA, these will be a prime focus and are areas that we have already actively been engaged on. We know the best path to ensuring 5G leadership for the United States is the entire government working in a coordinated fashion to support the industry's 5G push. From my perspective, this will take four forms. Making spectrum available, removing obstacles to deploying infrastructure, and ensuring we have a collective strategy to secure 5G networks and collaborating on standards as the 5G race unfolds. NTIA will play a number of these important roles, but our chief responsibility will be finding spectrum to support competitive, ubiquitous, and secure 5G in America. To get there, we need to have spectrum available across all portions of the band, low band, mid band, and high band. And we've been very successful in leveraging our existing relationships within the federal government and the interagency process to assess which bands can be opened up for commercial purposes. Up in the millimeter wave range, NTIA continues to support the FCC's spectrum frontiers proceeding by collaborating on approach for sharing between federal and non-federal users in 37 gigahertz. We're optimistic that if we get this right, it will serve as a model to inform how sharing can be done in other millimeter wave bands. We also welcome the FCC's vote earlier this week to establish auction rules for 24 and 28 gigahertz. And we're working with the commission to explore what other high bands might be good candidates to make available. The commission, of course, has opened a proceeding on spectrum above 95 gigahertz. And just yesterday, Chairman Pai announced that a proposal would be forthcoming to lead more effective uses of the educational broadband service spectrum in 2.5. This one's particularly interesting for me. As a young law student here in Washington, DC, I interned in the FCC's Wireless Telecommunications Bureau. And the first thing I worked on as a baby lawyer was on the predecessor bands, MDS and ITFS. So I'm happy to see that 2.5 will be getting some attention from the FCC. For the mid-band range, NTIA has already identified that 3450 to 3550 megahertz is a candidate band for repurposing to commercial services. To be clear, we still have a lot of work to do before that will be able to be made available and to determine how to protect government incumbents when we do, in particular the Defense Department that has vital radar systems in that band. DOD plans to submit a proposal under the Spectrum Pipeline Act to carry out a comprehensive study to determine the potential for introducing advanced wireless services in this band without harming current operations. It's exciting. And frankly, it's exactly what Congress envisioned in 2015 when it expanded the permissible uses of the Spectrum Relocation Fund to include studying the possibility of freeing up spectrum by consolidating systems or otherwise using spectrum more efficiently and effectively. 
Directly adjacent to that band is the 3.5 gigahertz CBRS spectrum. Engineers in our Office of Spectrum Management and at our research lab in Boulder, Colorado, the Institute for Telecommunication Sciences, are helping bring CBRS to life. Their work revolves around the innovative concept of dynamic protection zones, or DPAs, which are designed to replace static exclusion zones and allow more flexible spectrum sharing between federal and non-federal users. The 3.5 gigahertz model demonstrates that we can move towards more dynamic sharing even as we continue to protect key government systems that are vital for national security and public safety. And the collaborative work in 3.5 points towards a promising future for managing our spectrum resources between federal and non-federal users. In the low band, the Spectrum Pipeline Act requires NTIA to identify for auction 30 megahertz of federal spectrum below 3 gigahertz by 2022, and to identify an additional 100 megahertz beyond that. As part of this effort, NTIA, along with the Office of Management and Budget and the FCC, has been busy evaluating pipeline plans submitted by federal agencies. Two have been approved and funded to date, the 1300 to 1350 megahertz band and the 1675 to 1680 megahertz band. Additional pipeline plans have been proposed and are being reviewed, and we look forward to moving forward on all of those. We're committed to developing and implementing novel spectrum strategies, spectrum management approaches, and other ways to make spectrum available for commercial services. We're happy to see that Congress continues to be interested in this as well with the passage of Ray Baum's Act, which was signed into law as part of the budget deal. Ray Baum's Act includes a provision on researching incentives for agencies to relinquish or share spectrum and includes a study on bi-directional sharing. As another example, the President's budget for fiscal year 2019 includes a proposal to authorize NTIA to administer leases of federal spectrum to non-federal users. This is still very much a proposal at this point, and many details need to be sorted out. But I really do believe that it has great potential to be another tool in the toolkit for NTIA to help make more spectrum available for commercial use. Could upgraded technology or capabilities serve as an incentive? Could new agencies be beneficiaries of the commercial services in those bands? We'd need to sort that out, figure out how to fund it, figure out what resources would be needed to negotiate leases, but hopefully we'll have the opportunity to do so if the President's budget is adopted. Beyond Spectrum, deploying small cells and other wireless infrastructure will also be vitally important to our success in 5G. This administration has prioritized efforts to modernize federal processes for permitting and review of major infrastructure projects to spur investment, speed construction, and decrease costs. NTIA is working with our federal partners to improve federal coordination through the, our interagency working group that we co-chair with the Department of Agriculture's Rural Utilities Service. The working group is focusing on three areas. First is federal permitting. We're looking at what's required to place broadband facilities on federal lands with the goal of streamlining permitting efforts and establishing consistency across federal agencies. The second area is federal funding of broadband projects. The group will report on the effectiveness of various federal broadband programs and issue recommendations on how to better coordinate the various funding streams within the federal government. And the third area is leveraging federal assets for broadband projects. The government is the single largest landowner in the United States, and it can boost deployment immensely by actively reducing barriers to deployment on public lands and in government-owned buildings. In January, President Trump issued an executive order and a presidential memo to make federal assets available to support rural broadband deployment and to streamline federal permitting by deploying uniform agency applications and contract forms. As we move aggressively to set up 5G networks across this country, we must be equally aggressive in our efforts to secure them. The President has made clear that secure 5G is part of our nation's national security strategy. Once these networks are active, it's hard to think of a sector of our economy that won't be dependent on them. We cannot afford to put security on the back burner. We have to have a plan for security from the outset. And I know that a number of the folks in this room and the companies represented here are at the forefront of these efforts. There's no question the federal government has a vested interest in 5G networks being made secure. Having said that, I believe the most effective 5G security strategy will revolve principally around industry-led standards efforts. But these standards will need to take into account government requirements or considerations where appropriate. As a government, we're looking to collaborate broadly with industry to assess and identify gaps and opportunities in the development of global standards. We want to work with you on a strategy to ensure U.S. interests are being adequately represented 
and our ideas advanced as effectively as possible across the standards landscape. That means the entire landscape, in addition to the traditional wireless bodies that we think of, such as 3GPP, we need to be engaged with standards initiatives related to the Internet of Things, connected automobiles, and other emerging technologies that will influence the 5G environment. Just as global standards are important, so too are global spectrum allocations. This is particularly the case right now with the ITU's World Radio Communications Conference quickly approaching. WARC-19 will tee up a number of spectrum bands for IMT, or Advanced Mobile Services, as well as other important spectrum uses, including by governments. And anytime I talk about the ITU, I want to also talk about the opportunity our country has to advocate for an important advocate for our interests uh, in ITU leadership. Ms. Doreen Bogdan Martin, a former NTIA employee, is the US candidate to lead the ITU's Telecommunications Development Bureau. And I can't think of a more qualified person for this leadership position. While at NTIA, Doreen championed our pro-growth and pro-competition satellite policy, leading first to the privatization of Inmarsat, then Intelsat. If elected, Doreen would not only be the first American elected to one of the five positions, but she'd also be the first woman elected in the union's 153-year history. As we see here today, there's a clear alignment between the government's interests and the ind industry's interests on both where we need to go and how we're going to get there. And there are many opportunities for us to work together going forward. As one example, today, NTIA announced that we're seeking applications from those interested in serving on our Commerce Spectrum Management Advisory Committee. I encourage you to consider joining and help us shape NTIA's approach on spectrum policy. Through our combined efforts, we can make our vision of 5G a reality and we'll see a safer, more productive, and connected America. Thanks very much. Thank you, Administrator, and let us know how we can help with your vision for 5G spectrum and infrastructure policy.